Hey everyone, this is Joe. I am the Digital Astronomer. Thank you for tuning into my channel today. Today we're going to continue nebulae season by looking at M27, the Dumbbell Nebula, which has been recently kind of renamed by Trevor Jones to be the Apple Core um, Nebula. Now I'm not sure it completely looks like an Apple Core, but it doesn't look like a Dumbbell either. So I think this is one of the most amazing objects in the night sky. Stick around. I'm going to tell you about it. I'm going to show you how I imaged it. And then we're going to look, take a look at the final picture. All right, real quick, let me, let's me let take just a minute and go back and, and notice something. This was a image that I took of the Dumbbell Nebula back in September of last year, 2019. Um, I took this with a Celestron C6, and of course, I added these uh, fake... Um, uh, these fake crosses on the stars and uh so let's ignore that i'm kind of embarrassed by that but anyways this was a uh, image that i got last year uh it was okay not too bad um i really like the dumbbell nebula i've tried it to image it a couple times let's see this was also that was the same image taken in september 2019 um this was a this is on my facebook page by the way uh later on i've done um I uh, thought a couple other images of it. Yeah, I did this one here. This was taken on de December 22nd. And again, not the best images in the world, but I only show you these, number one, so you can see the progress I've made in astrophotography, but also to kind of show you, it's been a really fascinating object for me all along. Just as soon as I started into astronomy, I got interested in the Dumbbell Nebula. I can remember as a teenager looking at it uh, through a... Uh, through a um, science teacher that we had in high school. I got to look at it through um, a, a telescope that he had. Um, and I'm sorry, that was in college, uh, not high school, and, um, and really was fascinated by it. Um, to find it, if you look towards the east, it's technically in the constellation Volpecula, but the easiest way I find to find it is uh, find the star Seder and the star Al Altair, and it's about halfway in between. So if you're using a pair of binoculars or you're just trying to find it in your telescope, that's sort of the way that you could find it. And, and you can kind of zone in a little uh, tighter because if you get to Seder and Altair, then, of course, you could find these two star guide stars um, and, and then kind of get yourself narrowed down. If we zoom in a little bit you'll see why it was called a planetary nebula. Of course, it was discovered back in 1764 by Charles Messier, and it was given the designation of being a planetary nebula simply because it, it looks like a planet. When you look at it, it kind of looks planetary. And uh, so that's kind of why it was given that call, uh, that, that designation. But in reality, what this is, is the result of a very old giant star that kind of reached the end of its life cycle, uh, ran out of hydrogen, and basically expelled a lot of gas. That's what we see um, in and around the nebulae, all right? So if we go back over here, let me pull up my picture. This is the picture that I got of it. All of this blue and orange or red, um, all of that is the gas that was expelled from this giant star sort of running out of hydrogen fuel. Now, what happened was once it got down to sort of a, I'll call it a critical mass, it collapsed back on itself. And what we see today, this star that I'm pointing at right here is a white dwarf that was created, um, uh, again, by the collapse of the remaining mass of the star after it burped out, you know, all of the gas that we see out here. The rest of it collapsed in, and it formed a white dwarf. And um, this is a very hot, very dense star. In fact, I looked it up. This burns 14 times hotter than the surface of our sun. Now, the other thing that I want to point out to you is notice that this is sort of knotty. Notice that there's little knots and, and uh, areas of gas here that are more dense than others. 
what happens is as this gas expands, it still exerts gravity on itself. And so some of the denser areas begin to collapse down and begin to sort of coagulate together, and they form these darker, denser regions that we see out here. There's also some reasons given why there's actually a, another smaller star that's uh, a little younger in its life cycle that's orbiting around this white dwarf. And the effects of that is what causes this, you know, you don't see an even ring that goes out around, um, but rather we see this dense area here and here. And that's what causes that is that star as it rotates around. I find that pretty fascinating. I, I bring that up about the knots to kind of lead towards what we're going to look at next week. This is M27. Before I talk about what I'm going to show you next week, which is probably the best picture that I've ever taken. Um, let me just, just point out, uh, say one other thing about this. This image was taken with about nine hours of data. I was shooting 180 second subs uh, with my Orion ED80T and ZW0183MC camera, and which is a Keller CMOS camera. And so this is about nine hours worth of data that I collected over a period of about three nights. And a couple of things that I, I really am excited about with this particular image is that I got much rounder stars. These are the best stars that I've had in any picture that I've taken. I also kind of like the color balance in this. So I was pretty excited about that. Okay, now let me show you what I'm going, the image that I'm going to show you next week. And I want to come back to these knots for just a moment. Next week, we're going to look at the Eagle Nebula, and I'm just going to give you a real quick preview because I got to tell you, this is the best image that I've ever taken. This is my image of the Eagle Nebula. I'm going to tell you all about how I captured this and how I processed it next week, but notice that here in this much, much larger nebula, we have also here and, you know, all up on the tops of these, this is the pillar of creation, all of these areas here, these denser areas, these are star forming regions. Now you don't have star forming regions in the, the Dumbbell Nebula, but you do have these dense clouds, these denser areas. So we're going to take a look at that next week. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do me a favor, click on like, subscribe, and share. That way you can help me get the word out and uh, help me build my channel. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this, this video. Just a quick reminder, if you enjoyed this video, please help support me by clicking on thumbs up and share. Thank you.